The liberal media appears to be turning away from President Biden as they're now realizing he's not the right man for the job. Uh-oh. Read these headlines. One Washington Post columnist writing, Bidenism is failing. The question is, how badly? A New York Times writer says he is fearing a Biden bloodbath. Oh. And an MSNBC columnist says at this point in Biden's presidency, his back is to the wall and his dreams of having an FDR-like presidency are fading away the closer we get to November. They are fading. Fox News contributor Joe Concha joins us now. Joe, what do you make of this shift in coverage? It's like deja vu almost, Carly, because we've been talking about this for many months, right, that, that this is an administration that is failing, and it's failing on two fronts, the first one being that they're completely incompetent, right, in terms of handling inflation, gas prices, crime, border, education. That's not just one guy's opinion. You look at every poll on those issues, the, this administration's either in the 30s or the 20s, and that's not where you want to be if you want to be successful, because these are major issues that Americans feel, right, particularly the economic and crime aspects, and they deeply care about it. Uh, you had a great interview, by the way, with, with, with that father uh, before, uh, as far as the fentanyl issue as well, and that, that is the silent killer that this administration is barely talking about. So th that's what I mean, and, and, and we're talking about messaging here as well. President Biden again yesterday blamed inflation on Vladimir Putin and COVID, and this constant con in, in playing the victim is becoming very irritating to many voters. They want problem solvers, not solvers. And, and in this case, you know, it's hard to see how any of this gets turned around before November, and when the president loses control of the House and the Senate, you're going to see a revolt within the party that likely results in several challengers for the nomination in 2024, and that will only be a bigger distraction for the president in terms of getting anything done. He's gotten very little done to this point, guys. With that, Joe, let us lighten it up for a bit, and I beg Carly for this segment. I've never wanted to do a segment more in my life. Here ben? it is, the New York mm -hmm. Times executive okay. editor being ridiculed for his uncomfortable photo shoot to announce his new job. There's a picture of the photo mm. shoot itself. Of course, something like that eliciting a lot of reaction online. One person saying, this looks like the draw me like one of your French girls line from Titanic. <laughs> However, as a Seinfeld fan, you and I both will appreciate, cue the George. Cue the George. As someone who oh. literally edits a print publication for a living, Joe, why, why would you ever do a photo shoot like this? Oh, because, you know, there's the Me Too movement, right? And great job throwing Costanza in there. I would have done the same exact thing of producing this segment. Uh, but <laughs> we talked about the Me Too movement. The, the journalism community, many and not all, there's certainly some good reporters out there, but, but, but many, it, it's more like the look at Me Too movement, right? It, it led by Jim Acosta during the Trump years. So... If you're taking a photo like that, what screams more look at me too than that editor right there sitting on a carpet with, with a coffee mug that has a Japanese uh, emblem on it for, for whatever reason? I'm telling you, you can't take the New York Times seriously. You ha we haven't for some time. It's called the paper of record. But, but when you lay on a carpet like that, it's okay. Here I am, not what's the story. Any serious editor, right? Uh, ben Bradley, for example, Washington Post, you know, Watergate years, would never do that in a thousand years. But this is why the New York Times isn't taken seriously anymore, uh, because people know how partisan they are. They haven't endorsed a Republican presidential candidate since 1956, okay? Uh, that, that's yeah. a very, very long time ago. Well, they take a side, Carly. I'm, yeah, I'm sure that um, not a lot of Americans knew what the editor of the New York Times looked like before this now picture of him. So he's getting eyeballs. Is that a win? Real Maybe creepy. a little win in there. Joe, thank you. All right, thank you. Like the yellow, by the way. Good, good, good thank touch. You. Very nice color. Very I appreciate springy. that. Very you nice. You look good too, Todd. I appreciate it. All right, you. take care. Thanks. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.